Hey, what is going on? Welcome to this episode number 139 of Life and Lessons. I'm Sean Spooner, and if you're new here, here's what you need to know. This podcast is a place where I tell the story of growing a business, of growing as a person, and of taking on some fairly unusual challenges, sometimes on my own and sometimes joined by the most interesting people. I know the only thing that's guaranteed with this podcast is that every time you press play, you're going to learn something new. Now, I hope you're well. Apologies if you came to YouTube last week to watch last week's episode. If you listened, you'll of course know that I didn't really have a lot to talk about. I was very tired. I had been very busy and I just couldn't be bothered setting up the video setup so there wasn't video. If you didn't listen and you came to watch it, it wasn't there because there wasn't a video. So I apologize. But either way, we're back. The video is back. Um... And I've got a few random things to tell you about this week. Nothing particularly exciting, if I'm honest. Nothing hugely profound, but a couple of funny little stories, a couple of interesting little updates. And then I want to dive in to an idea that I've been thinking about for the last week or so. Um, and so let's, let's just start with the, the strange developments, the strange stories. The first one is that if you are watching on YouTube, you'll see that I have a plaster on the end of my finger because I was rummaging through my bag last night when I got home looking for some electrolyte tablets uh, which were in the office which is why I couldn't find them as I was desperately rummaging through the bottom of my bag um, I grabbed something didn't know what it was turns out the other day I was in the office and before a meeting I had to have a quick shave so I bought some disposable razors um, and the razor that was in the bottom of my bag the, the plastic end of it slipped off as I grabbed it. And so I currently have a like free straight lines, razor blade shaped cut on the end of my finger, uh, which I didn't think would be a huge problem or of any significance, which is why um, I thought nothing of it until this morning when I got to the office. Now it's my left hand and I am left-handed and um, I use a Apple magic trackpad thing with my left hand all day whilst working. That's the mouse I have here in the office. And of course, because it, reacts to uh, like skin like a touch screen um the plaster doesn't work with it and so i can't pinch or um zoom or scroll or any of these things on my mouse so i've been having to use my right hand all day which sounds minor but try using a mouse with the opposite hand to the one that you've used for the last 20 or so years right it's very similar i was saying to sarah in the office today it's very similar to trying to brush your hands with the op sorry trying to brush your teeth with the opposite hand to use your, your non-dominant hand Sounds like it's really easy. It really is not. And then also typing all day. Um, fortunately, today wasn't a day of any big writing projects, but even just things like meeting notes and uh, emails, typing all of that up. When you can't feel the end of your finger, um, it's really weird typing because the other nine fingers as you type are getting kind of feedback. And I guess that feeds back to your brain. Whereas this finger kind of not registering because I can't feel the end of it through the plaster really weird. So I don't recommend doing that. Um, it's probably a reason why they don't sell razors to young people. And it is because they are dangerous. And I found that out yesterday whilst rummaging through the bottom of my bag. Um, the second random update is that this Sunday at 11.15 a.m., uh, I'm going to be on GB News. So this is my first time ever on live TV. Of course, as you know, from the Young Apprentice days, from all of the Corby magazine press coverage, I've done plenty of pre-recorded, edited TV, both kind of factual entertainment and news stuff. I've also done a fair bit of live radio over the years. I think most notably me and Lewis were on BBC Radio 2 with Simon Mayo. So that was like a big, big listenership, right? Um, and yeah, I think that this news broadcast going out live, so I'm going to have to sit in front of this camera here and talk and as I talk whatever words come out of my mouth will be heard by probably you know several thousand people I don't know the viewership of GB News on a Sunday morning but like a, a fairly substantial amount of people right and so just the thought and the pressure of having to filter myself to not swear filter myself to make sure that the sentence kind of flows which I'm sure it will right I was talking to somebody yesterday and they're like I'm sure you'll be fine and I'm like yeah look I've done basically 140 plus if you add on the ones I've been a guest on like 150 ish podcasts right where I literally sit and I talk and it's always fine and on top of that I've done dozens and dozens of conversations over the last year alone with clients and interesting people where I don't 
stammer and I don't stop and I don't get confused. And so to think that that's going to happen on live TV is obviously entirely irrational. But um, other than the slight apprehension, because it's live, uh, it's going to be exciting. From what I understand, I only had a brief chat with the producer as they booked it, but it is going to be a conversation on Michael Portillo's show, which he does on a Wednesday morning between, I believe, 10 a.m. and midday. Sorry, a Sunday morning, not a Wednesday morning, Sunday morning. Um, and we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be talking about podcasting, right? Because unlike the traditional media, which has always been there and is somewhat of a gatekeeper where you have to fight your way in there, podcasting is democratized and anybody can grab a microphone, whether it's a cheap one or an expensive one, whether they have a nice camera or not, and they can sit and they can talk and they can share their thoughts. And hopefully somebody will be on the other side listening like you are now receiving those thoughts and in some cases sharing feedback. And so um, Michael, who is obviously of a different generation to me, uh, will be an interesting kind of host for that conversation, I think, because he obviously has an incredible amount of sorry, an incredible amount of experience in traditional media. I do not. I have a fairly solid amount of experience over the last few years in podcasting, at least as far as I'm aware. He does not. So it'll be interesting. I'm excited for that. So if you are around on Sunday morning, do make sure that you tune in. It's on GB News at 11.15am. And if not, I'm sure I'll post some videos somewhere after the fact or something. Although saying that, I'm not doing it from here, right? I'm not doing it from this usual video setup. And so I'm going to need to, when I get back to Corby tomorrow night, try and figure out how between the couple of lights I have for this setup here and the camera, uh, and I probably use the wireless lapel microphone, how I can make something that looks at least roughly like broadcast quality footage to then do that interview down the line, because, you know, I could just do what everybody else does and um, stick a MacBook webcam on and hope that the MacBook microphone isn't too echoey. Like I recorded quite a few episodes of this podcast in the beginning on this MacBook, right? The MacBook microphone is good. The MacBook webcam is shit. But just generally speaking, what I'm getting at is the idea that I could do it just on a laptop. But I don't know. They uh, they invited me to go in. I said it's easier to do it remote because it's a Sunday morning and I'm not particularly close to London. And so given that I'm doing it remote um, and every other guest on that channel that day, give or take, will be in the studio. I want whatever setup I come up with to look nice and to kind of look the part. And so I need to, in my bedroom, which I probably only spent about six days in since I moved in. So I don't even know what setup I'm going to come up with, but I need to find some sort of setup that looks nice. Um, I have a rough idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to move a plant much like I have in this setup here. And I'm going to um, stick some books behind me because everybody loves some books behind them live on TV, don't they? There's just like the rules. Um, and hopefully it should look nice. And hopefully my very loud neighbor, because the walls in that house are very thin. Hopefully they're not on a mad one on Sunday morning, because if they are, um, viewers of GB news will not only be able to hear me, but they'll almost definitely be able to hear her as well. So I need to kind of cross my fingers on that one. And then the third very random update that I have to tell you before I move on to, uh, talking about an idea that I want to explore a little bit is that I woke up this morning and I was verified on Instagram. Now I put on my story somewhat as like, I say a joke, but like a tongue in cheek, like it's just funny, right? It's just this novel thing that doesn't happen very often. And so I put on my story and I kind of thought nothing of it, Uh, got on with my day. And then a few hours later, I looked at my phone and this might sound really weird, but actually (laughs) looking at my phone after getting a few blue pixels added next to my name on a random app on the internet and seeing the response from the people in my dms was in a little weird way a bit depressing because i put countless hours into content like this right this podcast here whether it's these episodes here which probably on average take maybe i don't know two hours two and a half hours between setting up planning what to say recording it editing it uploading it doing a thumbnail packing down. It's like two and a half hours of my week, give or take every single week. And then when you're talking guest episodes, we're probably in the ballpark of five to six hours between booking the guests, liaising with them. Um, That's on top of, by the way, reading their entire book, which is generally what I need to do before a conversation like that. Uh, And then uh, recording it, filming it, editing it, getting uploaded, maybe doing a trailer, maybe working with someone for a trailer, whatever it might be that week. 
Um, like there is a significant investment of time that goes into this podcast. And I genuinely believe, and this is the reason I've been doing it for almost three years now, that wrapped up in this podcast is value, right? This is as, as a individual, as a person, this is where I try and kind of impart value and share lessons and, and give the things that I wish I knew sooner so that people listening can, can hear that and hopefully action that in their lives, right? And so you take all of that, all of that work, and then you throw into it things like the TikToks and the shorts and the reels where I try and distill down lessons. And you, you take the, the other random content I produce, right? And you've got this big ball of kind of intentional effort, which frankly, although it gets a really good reception in places like the podcasting apps where people have chosen to listen and on YouTube, which is a discovery platform where new people come in at the top of the funnel and discover the content and leave nice comments and, and subscribe and all of this stuff, right? It gets a good reception there. But on Instagram, where there are all of these people that I know that I have in some way encountered in real life at some point, the fact that most people, not everybody, admittedly, and I guess if you're watching this, you're probably not included in this list by virtue of the fact that you're here watching the podcast. But most people who watch my Instagram story, for example, have never once in the last three years, in the last 140 episodes, interacted with, shared their feedback on, listened to or watched any of that content, which I think is quite valuable, right? And yet the, the sheer number of responses that I got to this picture of a fucking blue tick next to my name, um, at the last count, and there might be more now, I'm not going to want on my phone and check, but there were 19, one nine, 19 responses to that story. So DMs. And then if you use Instagram, you know, you can like scroll up and leave a heart and 13. So again, one free um, reactions to that story. So what's that? That's like 24, 25 people who have gone out of their way to, I guess, celebrate this random tick next to my name, which don't get me wrong, I appreciate it, right? Because they're, they're all doing the right thing. I'm not saying that that act in and of itself is bad. Like I appreciate anybody's support. And if somebody perceives a blue tick to be like an achievement and then they message me, great, like really happy about that. Thank you if you did do that. But my point is more that a little moment in the day where I'm like, oh, this is cool, was, it was kind of quickly closed down by the realization that what we as a society in general perceive as valuable and worthy of attention and worthy of, for want of a better word, praise seems to be massively disconnected from what actually, I guess, um, is worthy of attention. And perhaps, although this one subjective is worthy of praise, right? Um, and so it was just weird because the, the thought of having a fucking blue tick on Instagram and how that will feel has never crossed my mind. Someone literally replied to my tweet today and was like, how does it feel? I, that feels no bloody different. Like it's still just the Instagram app. But on top of all of that, where like I hadn't actually considered how it would feel, it was a really strange few hours of getting all of those messages and seeing all of those reactions and being like, fucking hell, like it's not a big deal. It's just interesting, I guess, is what I'm getting at. I feel like the world has been lied to when it comes to what is or isn't worthy of praise and attention, right? Because everybody looks at these Love Island people and they go on Love Island and they get their blue tick and then they've, oh my God, you've made it. Like, no, I think that there are so many people out there who are doing incredible things without the attention and without the praise that they deserve. And I think it is people like that who are putting out meaningful, useful, interesting, worthwhile content, many of which I've spoken about on this podcast before, right? There are incredible podcasters, both big and small that I know. There are incredible um, thinkers and doers and creatives and musicians and all of these different people that I try and speak to you about. And I feel like all of their work is kind of overshadowed if the, the, the pinnacle of what we're celebrating with, with everything we have available to us in this world is some blue pixels next to a name. So I guess that was my, my verification realization. Um, saying that, however, I did do a half tongue in cheek tweet this morning. I probably will actually do this explaining the exact process of how somebody with a thousand followers, which is a very fucking low number, right? Can go and get verified on Instagram because I'll be honest with you. I entirely reverse engineered the process to make it happen. Um, and I don't mean that in a dodgy way. Like I mean that Instagram very clearly publishes their criteria for verification. And then you can almost take that criteria and then work backwards to meet that criteria and then get verified. So over Christmas at some point, I probably will mainly because the title will be incredible. And I think that it will bang on YouTube. I think I will record a video explaining how 
I got verified on Instagram with a thousand followers. So look out for that if you're interested in how to do it, because a couple of people have asked me and sorry for not responding, but I don't have the time to sit and write like a thousand word essay of how to do it. But I will because the video can scale and leverage and be seen by lots of people. I will record a video on it at some point. So there we go. Look out for that. And then the very final random update to give you. And I promise that this one is more positive. It's just to say thank you if you have watched any of the videos on YouTube, whether it's the long form, whether it's a solo episode, whether it's the clips, whether it's the shorts, because this week I passed one of the uh, kind of numerical targets that I had set myself in Dublin last year for this podcast, which was passing 50,000 views. That was cool. Um, It was nice to go into that document and tick off one of those items because like I spoke about a few weeks ago when I was talking about goals shifting and changing throughout this year and also frankly me just not hitting some of my goals because some of them aren't going to be hit this year. Being able to tick something off in that list which was to reach 50,000 views on YouTube within my first year of publishing on there um, was nice. So thank you if you're watching this. Thank you if you've watched any videos. If you're not already please do subscribe because I get shouted at by uh, fellow content creators because I never tell anyone to subscribe on here. I never tell anyone to leave a review on Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts. And so do all of those things wherever you are. If you haven't done it, leave me a review, please. Click the thumbs up, (laughs) subscribe, do all of those things. Listen to me talking like somebody with a fucking blue tick now, aren't I? I'm telling you to like and subscribe, but please do because I'm sure it helps. I'm not entirely sure how because I don't pay a huge amount of attention to that stuff. But nonetheless, thank you for watching and getting me up to 50,000 views. Um, I'm hopeful, actually, that I can maybe pass 100,000 this year between the couple of big guests, sorry, couple of big guest episodes coming up, uh, including Ali Abdul. And then also just absolutely pumping out shorts, because although I've spoken about this before, I felt a little bit icky about producing them. They do numbers if YouTube is going to give me reach and subscribers in return for giving it the kind of content that it wants. I'm going to play that game. And so there we go. And then the last thing I want to talk about today is, funnily enough, a concept that I shared in a very brief watered down version on a reel and on a TikTok and on a short the other day, which is the idea of asking yourself what would need to change for your day to be slightly less shit, right? What, what kind of things can you change about your day to make it better? Because like I speak about a lot, life is essentially the things that happen in between all of the big events, right? The majority of your life is day after day after day after day, waking up and doing the same thing and going through the motions. And so I think that people make this mistake of assuming that they dislike their lives because they think that they dislike their days and assuming that they dislike their days because they rightly dislike parts of their days but i am yet to meet anybody and i'm sure there are some people out there and if it is you please disregard this information but i have yet to meet anybody who genuinely can't control at least part of their day right there there are a few hours in the morning if you wake up early there are a few hours in the evening before you go to sleep you might have your lunch hour you might have your weekends and days off and annual leave whatever it is assuming because it is most people um in this position who dislike their job or their college or their uni or whatever right Even if you dislike the thing that takes up the majority of your day, you can design the rest of your day to actually increase your chances of being happy and content. But most people don't because they assume that they've lost the battle before it begins. They assume that because of this negativity bias I spoke about in the video that I uh, published the other day, we have this kind of uh, ability to be really good at focusing on the negative rather than the potential in any situation. And so I don't know, let's take an example of somebody who doesn't particularly like their job, right? They're going to spend the whole of their Sunday thinking, fuck me, I've got to go to work tomorrow. And that's going to kind of get them down. And then it's Sunday evening and they're thinking, oh God, I need to, do I really want to go to bed yet? Because when I wake up, I'm going to lose all my freedom for another week. And then they set that alarm and they wake up and then they're on the commute. And because they're on the commute to the job they hate, they're then thinking about the job and they're in a bad mood. And then they get to the job and they're doing the job they hate. So that period of time is taken up. And then by the time they get home, because they've expended so much energy being annoyed about this this singular part of their day that they can't control, um, they're then going to sit and fucking watch Netflix or sit on their phone all night or, I don't know, play video games. Or Marcel told me off about this once because he said, what beef do I have with video games? I have no beef with people playing video games, to be clear. But what I mean is um, people 
when they're in that kind of situation that I'm speaking about here, will kind of surrender the latter half of their day doing something that perhaps isn't overly productive or conducive with their goal of getting out of that rut because they assume that their day has been bad, period, because part of it that they couldn't control was. And so I came back to this question in that video, right, which was, what would your day need to look like for it to be slightly less shit? What would your morning and your lunch and your evening and your bedtime routine and how you spend your weekends, what would all of that need to look like for you to actually think that, yeah, you know what, although I don't like that big part of my day, that that work, that uni, that whatever it is, I'm quite content and happy in life. And I feel like I have balance and meaning and some sort of stability because the rest of my days are really good and I get to do the things I want to do, right? And so my approach to working out the answer for you, i.e. how you can work out the answer for yourself, is as soon as this podcast is over, I think that you should sit down with your phone or with a pen and paper or however you take notes, right? And literally from the moment you wake up on your average day, let's say it's at, I don't know, half past seven, through until the moment you go to bed, which of course we would hope is no later than half past 11 if you're waking up at half seven because you need those eight hours of sleep. Because if not, it's understandable that you think your day is shit because you're probably walking around sleep deprived. But anyway, we won't go into that. So you've got those 18-ish hours to play with, right? And so, you know, write up, write your wake time at the top, write your sleep time at the bottom. And then in the middle, if let's say you work for eight hours and you don't like that, just block that out, right? Get rid of it because you can't control that part. So whether you like it or dislike it, just kind of disregard it. Don't even think about that. There's no point dwelling on things you can't control. And then look at the time you have left and minute by minute, hour by hour, literally write down your ideal day. Like what would it look like? Genuinely, what would you have to do for your day to be incredible, right? What time would you wake up and what song would you be listening to when you wake up and how quickly would you get out of bed and jump into the shower so that you feel awake and maybe what things would you avoid doing in the morning, right? Would you avoid checking your emails before you get to work? Would you avoid, I don't know, reading the news so you have this impending sense of doom all day about whatever's going on in the news today? Um, and then kind of, you know, how would you get to the bus stop? How would you get to the train station? What would you do on your drive? If you drive to work, what would you be listening to? How would that help your day? What breakfast would you have? What breakfast do you like? You know, is, is that something that you can add into your day that you like that you can control? Same with lunch, same with talking to a colleague or sending a message to somebody you care about. And then again, in the evening, like if you have goals in life, maybe how can you work towards those? If you want to treat yourself in the evening because you know you dislike your job, what can you actually do to treat yourself in a way that isn't just entirely passive and sitting on a sofa? There are so many hours of the day that we all control, right? And it might be more or less for you. You know, you might work four hours a day. You might work 10 hours a day. I don't know the answer, but you do know the answer. So block out that middle part, get rid of it, ignore it, and then design your perfect day. Look at it decide that it is actually realistic because that's really important here. When I say your ideal day, I don't mean like I'm going to wake up and go to Disneyland and run low. It has to be like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do these things that I comfortably know that I can actually do on an average day to make sure that it's not that shit, to make sure that my subjective level of happiness in life is a little bit better, to make sure that I'm more content with the life I'm living in spite of the things I can't control. And then when you're happy that it is actually realistic, assuming you're listening to this on Friday or over the weekend, as most people do, but if not, pick an arbitrary date at some point in the future. But let's say Monday, if you're listening to this on Friday or over the weekend, from Monday onwards, even if it's just for a week to begin with, try and live your day-by-day life as closely as possible to that ideal day, right? Try and do as many of those things in the morning and at lunch and in the evening and before bed that you know will give you a happy and a comfortable and a healthy and a content life. Because again, this might not be you. You might be able to disregard everything I'm saying here, but I know so many people who think that their entire day is a write-off because in the middle of it is a thing they don't want to do. And if you can flip that script and realize that that is not only untrue, but really unhelpful, right? If you're writing off the majority of your day because of something you're doing in the minority of it, you're literally wasting your life away. So please actually try this if you feel like that is you, right? If you feel like your life could be better and it's because you're uh, kind of wasting the days away, waiting for that next holiday, waiting for that next weekend, waiting for that next annual leave, see what you can do about making those days that you would otherwise rather avoid better by designing a better day. Um, 
yeah, that's the four. I feel I can go around in circles now. So I'll leave that here. Um, and then one very last thing to say, and I'm mainly saying this to hold myself accountable. The email newsletter group will be back by the end of this month. I have been meaning to do this for months and months and months. I probably haven't sent an email to that list in about 14 months. I think, I think it was like last July ish that I stopped sending emails. I'm not sure, but either way it's coming back and it's coming back this month. There's only going to be one a week. Like I've told you before, when I told you before I was coming back and it didn't, however, it is on that list of things that I want to do by the end of the year. And so I'm not going to allow the final 10 or so weeks of the year to slip by without me actioning it, because then I'm going to have to face up to the fact when I'm in Dublin, looking at that, that list of goals for the year that I could have hit this one and I didn't. So I'm going to hit this one by the end of this month. You'll see links somewhere, maybe on Instagram, maybe on Twitter, maybe in the show notes of a future episode. And also if you listen every week, I'll also tell you when the sign up page is back. But at some point very soon, you'll be able to sign up to that newsletter. And it's going to be much the same as what it was before. If you're already in the group, basically just a, a thought that I've had or an idea that I've heard or a lesson that I've learned from the week. Uh, and I dive into it a little bit um, in written form, which is something that you don't get a lot of from me, right? I talk on here and I talk on videos and I do all this, but I very rarely sit down and actually document thoughts in writing. And I think that for all of the benefits of this kind of stuff in this medium, there's something about being able to pause and select your words carefully and edit that just allows ideas to kind of uh, take on a life of their own. So it's coming back is what you need to know. But in the meantime, thank you as always for listening. Make sure that you're watching GB News 11.15am on Sunday. I will try to be composed. Um, Have a good week and I'll see you back here this time next week for episode number 140 of Life and Lessons. See you then.